Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Hager. Welcome back to our Sunday School time at Emmanuel. We have been learning about the armor of God. Here's my soldier in armor from head to toe. Um, if you've been watching the videos, maybe you can remember the first two pieces of armor that we've talked about. Let's see. The first one is the belt of truth. The next one is the breastplate of righteousness. Did you get it? Today, we're going to hear about the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace. Well, that's not exactly how the Bible says it, but I've shortened it so we can remember better. The shoes of peace. Let me read to you what it says in the Bible. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Let me put my glasses on so I can read better. It says this, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's a mouthful. Let me say that again. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. We'll call it the shoes of peace. And we'll talk about what that means as we go. But before we begin, let's call on God's name. Let's ask him to teach us and to help us to understand and to grow in our faith. So, in the name of God the Father who made us, and God the Son who died for us, and God the Holy Spirit who lives in us, bless us now and always. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you so much for all that you give us through your Son, Jesus. Help us to hear and understand the gift of peace that you've given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so hmm, let's show that picture again. Shoes may not be the part of the armor that you would think would be most important, but really, it's all important. And think about it, a soldier needs good shoes to fight in a battle. Um, if their feet aren't protected and if their feet aren't safe, they'll get hurt and they wouldn't be able to stand firm. They wouldn't be able to walk and, and run when they need to, to go where they need to go. Now, I don't have shoes with metal um, armor on them, but I found some shoes in my closet and I thought I'd find some that maybe are good shoes for a soldier and some that might not be so good. So let's start with maybe what might not be so good. What's that? A flip-flop? Well, that probably isn't the best shoe for a soldier. Now my, the bottoms of my feet would be protected, but the top is all open. I might stub my toe and it's certainly not good for running. It would be uncomfortable. What about this shoe? Like a dress shoe. Look at the heel. Would that be comfortable for a soldier to wear? My toes are covered, but the top of my foot's all open and Boy, that would hurt after a while. I wouldn't get very far in a battle. Well, the shoe that I found in my closet, I think that would be best for going to battle, would be this shoe, my hiking shoe. My whole foot would be protected. It looks comfortable for walking and running. And I could tie it so my, sh my shoes wouldn't fall off at all. So I think that would be the best shoe that I have. Now, I'm going to put this on. And when I count to three, I want you to go and run and see if you can look in your closet and find the shoe that you have that would be the best for going into battle. The best to be ready to run and ready to walk. Something that would protect your feet and stay on, okay? So I'll count to three and say go. One, two, three, go. Okay, are you back? Did you find good shoes? That would make you ready to go and run and, and uh, wherever you needed to go. Are your feet protected? Good. Those good shoes on your feet are going to remind you that like a soldier needs good shoes to go into battle, God gives us what we need to be ready to take his 
peace wherever we go to the people around us. Hmm. God's peace. What does that mean? How does that look? Well, peace, when two people are at peace, they get along. They enjoy being together. It's good. They're at peace. Are we always at peace with other people? No. The Bible says that sin breaks our peace with other people. Sin breaks our peace and sin hurts people. Have you ever been hurt by someone? Has your peace with another person been broken? Maybe you've had a time when someone took something that didn't belong to you without asking and then they broke it. Did that hurt? Maybe you've had a time when you overheard someone lying about you, saying something that wasn't true. Does that hurt? Maybe you've had a time when someone left you out. They didn't invite you to the party or they wouldn't let you play with them. Does that hurt? Yeah, it does. And how does that make you feel about that person? Are you at peace with that person? Do you want to be with them? Are you getting along? <laughs> probably not. You probably want to get away from that person. You probably want to go as far away from that person as possible. It makes us mad. And we might say things like, I never want to play with you again. Sin breaks our peace and it separates us from other people. God says that sin separates us from God too. Our peace with God is broken. The Bible says that all people have sinned. All people have broken their peace with God, but God had a plan. God had a plan to heal our peace, to fix our peace. And his plan was to send his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who came to earth and was born as a baby. He grew up never sinning. He never broke his peace with God, his father. And then he died on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. He was buried in the tomb. And one, two, three days later, he came alive again. And he won our peace with God. So now our sins are forgiven by faith in Jesus and we are at peace with God forever. Our peace will, with God will never be broken. Jesus won our peace. He healed our relationship with God. And that's good news. And now God says, because we are at peace with God, we've been forgiven for everything, we can go and share God's peace. We can forgive that person who took from us. We can forgive that person that lied about us. We can forgive that person who left us out because God has forgiven us everything. He has given us what we need to be ready to go and share God's peace, forgiving others. Not only that, God says he has given us what we need to forgive not just family and friends, but our enemies, even those people who want to do harm to us, even those people who may never say sorry. Since we are at peace with God, He's given us peace. We can give it to everyone we meet, whoever we meet, friends, family, even our enemies. Well, we can't do that on our own, but God gives us his strength, his power, and his Holy Spirit to do what he says, to share his peace. And when we forgive others, then we can tell them the good news that Jesus died to bring them peace with God too. That's what God wants us to take to everyone. God didn't give us peace just to keep it to ourselves. No, he has fitted us with our, our shoes of peace. He has fitted us with the readiness to go and take the good news, the gospel of peace to everyone. 
So now I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible about Jesus, about how he was always at peace with God, and then how he showed us how he gave peace to those around him, even his enemies. So I'm going to open up my Bible. This is my Bible. I open it wide to learn about Jesus from God's words inside. So I'm going to open to the book of Luke. And this story um, goes back to the night before Jesus died on the cross. The night when he went with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. The night he went with his disciples to pray to his Father in heaven. And Jesus prayed three times asking God if there was another way for there to be peace between God and men besides Jesus suffering and death on the cross. Three times Jesus prayed, please take this from me. Is there another way for you to heal the broken peace? Is there another way for you to have, for, for men, for people to have peace with God other than Jesus' death on the cross? But God said no. This was the way, this was the only way to bring peace between God and men was that Jesus' perfect peace, his life of perfect peace, would be sacrificed on the cross to pay for our peace. So God said this was the way. And so Jesus got up after praying that third time, and as he got up, he heard a crowd coming into the garden, and he saw Judas leading the soldiers with clubs and spears and torches coming to, to arrest him. And as he saw Judas approach, remember Judas was one of his best friends, one of his 12 disciples. And Judas um, came up to Jesus and kissed him. And Jesus said to Judas, Judas, are you betraying me with a kiss? Do you think that must have hurt? When Judas sinned and betrayed Jesus, boy, that must have hurt. But Jesus showed peace. He showed peace to Judas and the soldiers. Well, the soldiers asked, or Jesus asked the soldiers, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. Well, Jesus' disciples they didn't like this at all. And they said, should we fight them? And one of his disciples, Peter, even took his sword out and cut off one of the servant's ears. And Jesus said, no, no, you must stop this. And he picked up the servant's ear and healed him. Jesus showed peace even to his enemies. And he said to his disciples, no, it must be this way. And then Jesus' disciples ran off. But Jesus showed peace. He went with the soldiers. He didn't fight. He even said, am I leading a fight that you would come at me in the middle of the night with spears and clubs? I was with you every day in the temple. I wasn't trying to fight or stir up problems. I was, I was teaching about God. I wanted to bring peace. I was healing and loving people. But the people didn't want peace with God. They wanted to arrest Jesus, and Jesus let them do that. But then even on the cross, Jesus showed peace to his enemies. Even from the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He showed forgiveness and peace to his enemies so that they could be at peace with God if they believed in him. So Jesus showed peace and Jesus won our peace so that we can show peace to others too. Isn't that good news? Well, I hope that you remember this week that wherever you go, and you can't go very far these days, can you? You might be able to walk around your neighborhood, but even in your own house, you can take God's peace to your family. 
I know it's hard to get along with brothers and sisters sometimes, and uh, sometimes we fight. But we can remember that God forgives us when we sin against someone and we hurt people. And um, we can forgive others when they hurt us because God's given us the gift of peace. Jesus paid for all of our sins. We are forgiven and always at peace with God. So we can go with our feet to our brother's room, our sister's room, to our mother and father. We can share God's peace. We can say, I forgive you. And we can remind them that Jesus forgives us and we have peace with God. And so then we have peace with God and God can heal our relationships with people and we can be at peace again. So it's a great gift, this peace that God's given us through his son, Jesus. And we can be ready. He's given us what we need to be ready to go take it to others. Let's close in prayer. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow, so we can talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for the peace we have through your son, Jesus. Help us to take your peace to others wherever we go. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Um, I'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye-bye.